Welcome to labminutes.com. In this video, we will be looking at syslog configuration on a Cisco router. Most of you are probably familiar with the concept of syslog already. Um, the most common form of syslog on a Cisco router is probably a, lock, a local lock buffer where you can keep the locking messages on the local storage on the router that you can um, review later. But obviously there's a limited storage on the router so it can be wrapped around and the better solution for that is to use an external syslog server. And there's a different flavor syslog server out there. There's a free version and there's a paid version or a, even a dedicated appliance that you can send your syslog messages to that also give you a better lock management capability for later troubleshooting. So on our diagram here we will be dealing with a R1 router at an IP dot two, and we're going to be using a syslog server at an IP dot thirty two. So let's start our configuration. So let's take a look at the different options that we have for net locking, and there is a lot of um, options that you can do. The first one that we're going to do is locking. origin ID and right here you can either do host name IP or you can even send any arbitrary string so here we're going to do string and give it a name origin R1 so we can easily identify it later the next command is locking facility so locking facility helps you uh, sort out uh, locking messages that may come from different sources. So if your syslog server support um, facility options, then you might want to um, pick different facility value for different kind of um, network devices. So here we're just going to do local 5. Then we're going to be sourcing our interface or a packet from the interface fast 00 for now. And just going to be our LAN IP and we're going to be specifying the IP of the syslog server. So that will be .16.4 just to show the diagram so you can see 16.4.32 um, actually it's a locking host Next option we're going to do is locking count. It will basically provide you the summary of number of syslog messages um, that has to occur, sort by a different type, which we will take a look and a little bit here. Locking count. Then we're going to do locking buffer. So specif specify the size of the buffer that we're going to allocate for a local um, on router locking. I'm just going to do 16384. Next, we're going to do locking console. So it's just to, if you're on the console serial cable, this will basically enable the locking messages on the console. And we say 7, which is the lowest level of locking that you can do. Seven being equivalent to debugging. The next command is locking trap. And that's we use locking trap to um, choose what locking level you want the lock messages to, to be sent to the syslog server. Here we also do debugging. R7. Let's see what we have so far. Okay. So you can see there's a lot more command that you can do, but the one that we 
just did here are the most commonly used ones. So feel free to um, do a little research on documentation and find out what the different options would do for you. So now uh, that we have everything configured, we're just going to see if we can test it. We did the locking buffer, so you can see there's not so much going on here. So let's find a way to test real quick. So here we are um, using a syslog server that comes with a, a built into a TFTP D32. If you are using um, TFTP, you might be familiar with this particular program. So one nice thing about this program is it comes with um, with a small uh, TF, uh, a syslog server that you can easily enable and just for our testing purposes here, it should be sufficient. So you can see that there's a lock messages that came in already. Um, you can see it's, it came from uh, 172.16.4.2. Before we start generating more lock messages, we are going to um, run a packet capture so we can see what kind of or this is what the syslog messages that looks like when it comes into the syslog server. So here we are on there. I'm just going to do a quick um, capture filter. We are only interested in traffic that has UDP port 154, which is the sys, uh, syslog UDP port. And do start and let's generate a uh, more syslog messages here. We're just going to use loopback one for our testing. Right now it's up, up, so we're going to do shut. And you can see right here, right away, um, the syslog messages has been received on their server side. And you can see right here, it said loopback one change state to admin down, which is exactly what is being logged on the console and just state is also down. It's coming from 4.2. Also exact, that's exactly what we, ha we have received on the Wireshark. Okay. We just um, do a quick test. Now we're going to change our source interface to be a loopback zero which is um, 1111, or actually it's, uh, let me update that IP real quick. So it should be 172.16.04. And let's generate some more lock messages. So no shut, that was previously shut, so we're gonna do no shut. You can see right there in the background, the our syslog server has received a couple more messages right here. As you can see, it said now loopback one stead is up, and a couple more. And now the source IP has been changed to the loopback, which is the IP we just entered 0.4. So let's take a quick look a little deeper into the actual packet that's it's been captured by Wireshark. So you can see here the facility is sh showing up as local 5. And this is the informational um, locking level 6. And you can see the actual syslog uh, messages to show up as a text or clear text in the payload of the packet as well. So there's not much, uh, nothing is uh, fancy there. It's just um, just the packet that contained the actual um, locking messages. Now come back to the router. Let's do a couple show commands. So show locking. So you can do show locking count.
and you can see it, it categorize the locking messages to um, down to a different type. So you can see there's a line protocol um, of a system total, this line protocol total, and there's like a link total. So it said up down we have received Severity 5, it has um, been locked twice as far as the line protocol. And let's see. Can also do lock history. So that's just basically a summary of the of the syslog. And right here it shows the latest lock messages is the loopback one. Um, state change to up with a timestamp. You can do show lock, which is the local lock on the router. And here we have all the same syslog messages show up. You can easily put a sequence number on your lock messages using service sequence number command. Again, if we let's generate a couple more syslogs, so shut, no shut, and then show lock. And now Now you can see the lock messages now. Each line is prepended by the line number or sequence number. So that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching lapminutes.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.